Hi all, this video explains the classification of comparators and its working. Comparator by definition is a precision instrument. These instruments are actually not measuring the dimensions but it compare the dimensions of a given component with the given standard. These are employed also to find out uh, how much the dimensions of the given component differ from that of common data. The basic principle of comparators are shown with these pictures. So in the first picture we can see that uh, first the comparator is set using a standard workpiece or a uh, gauge block. So the non-dimension is provided and uh, yeah, the zero of the comparator is set using that dimension. Then on second thing, uh, instead of that standard piece, we are uh, replacing it with the work piece. Now the deflection is noted. So in the second case, the deflection is like this. So most of the comparators having two marks in, markings like this. Okay, two markings will be provided on the scale, and these markings are representing the limits. So this one is say this one is limit. Uh, representing the upper limit of the dimension and this uh, lower mark is representing the lower uh, limit of the dimension and the difference between these two uh, upper limit and uh, lower limit is actually representing the tolerance the detailed study of limit and tolerance is uh, we are conducting in the next uh, module the tolerance, uh, the, the, the idea behind giving tolerance is that no work can be uh, perfect. So some some sort of uh, clearance should be given uh, for all type of machine. So we are fixing this upper limit and lower limit. And the uh, inference is like that. Uh, the dimension should lie between the upper limit and lower limit. Then that will be acceptable if it is above the upper limit or if, if it is fall below the lower limit that has to be rejected and in classification of comparators in subject point of view uh, we have to consider the mechanical comparators so mechanical comparator is further divided as uh, dial indicators uh, read type comparator sigma comparator johansson's microcriter depends on the working principle then uh, mechanical optical comparators are uh, again classified into optical lever, lever cis optimeter cis ultra optimeter c opto test comparators then electrical and electronics comparators are available and pneumatic comparators and in continuation uh, it is further classified the classification is continuing this like fluid displacement comparators projection comparators multi chip comparators, automatic gauging, electromechanical comparators, high sensitive uh, calibration comparatives, uh, etc. First we are considering the mechanical comparators. So mechanical comparator is uh, the feature, main feature of mechanical comparator is self-controlled. These are self-controlled and no power or any form of energy is required in, in, for its operation. Okay and uh, it employs mechanical means for magnifying small movement of the measuring stylus. The first example of a mechanical comparator is a dial indicator or a dial gauge. So the parts of the dial gauge are shown in this picture. So the spindle is the main part, then the dial, then the outer frame, fine adjustment, shorthand, uh, limiter, scale, uh, mark plate, dome hand, stem, gauge head, etc. Uh, then uh, the internal arrangement you can see that it is having a plunger. So the plunger has got a reciprocating movement like this, and it has got a rack and pinion arrangement over here. And this is actually converting the reciprocating movement uh, of the plunger into rotary movement of the needle so here it is happening the reciprocating movement is converted into rotary movement and then that rotary movement is uh, we need to further magnify 
so for magnification you are using compound gear train so a number of gears are arranged in the compound gear train and finally it is connected to the pointer so the pointer has got a magnified movement that means a small movement of the plunger is giving uh, is, is actually shown as a large deflection of the pointer the next mechanical comparator is a johansen's micro crater so the main parts are a plunger then it has got a body like this and then at the uh, top of this uh, member uh, we have got a bell crank lever and the bell crank lever is connected to a twisted strip and this twisted strip we are actually uh, having a point so in working uh, the plunger has got an upward movement when it is measuring so this upward movement will actually uh, oscillate or give an oscillatory movement or a rotary movement to the bell crank lever in this fashion since the bell crank lever is actually moving outwards uh, so the tension of the twisted strip is also increased it is actually tensed so by tension what is happening the coiled uh, twisted strip uh, will uncoil okay or otherwise untwist so this untwist movement is actually providing a rotary movement to the twisted strip and this rotary movement is actually indicated by the rotation of the point so that is how we are uh, giving the uh, pointer we are giving the pointer a rotary movement a magnified rotary movement in this instrument next is a reed type mechanical comparator a reed uh, means nothing but two strips of metal two parallel strips of metal we are using and that is known as the reed two parallel strips of metal and uh, another fe feature is that these two are not in contact so we have got uh, less friction in the movement of these strips and one strip is uh, fixed to a fixed block and another strip our reed is fixed to a floating block and this floating block is finally connected to the spindle so whenever the spindle has got an upward movement so this uh, uh, floating block is also moving upward direction so the reed connected to the uh, uh, floating block will have an upward movement but another reed is actually fixed so uh, the needle is connected the pointer is connected with the, these two reeds so one reed is uh, fixed and another reed will have a, a linear movement in the upward direction so uh, uh, finally we can have a rotary movement for a deflection for this pointer in that opposite direction so that is how we are having a magnified movement for the pointer Finally, we are considering the working of a sigma comparator. So the sigma comparator also having a plunger which is having upward movement when measuring. And uh, this upward movement, uh, it is connected with a, a sapphire bearing block you can see over here. And through that sapphire bearing block, it is connected to a moving block. And this portion is a moving block and it is connected to the fixed member using a cross strip hinge. So this portion is fixed, uh, but this portion is having movable since it is moving upward, the plunger is moving upward, it will have an oscillatory movement like this, our rotary movement in this direction. So that rotary movement is actually uh, uh, then impart to uh, Y amp. So this is the Y amp because it's a Y shaped amp, so it will also having a movement like in this direction since this part is moving upward this part is moving downwards okay so this downward movement uh, is actually uh, for the y member so at the end of the y member we have got a uh, belt band okay band is just like a belt okay it is actually a tensioned belt so it is a band so the band also having a movement in this direction downward direction then this band is connected with a drum drum is just like a pulley so it is uh, actually having a rotary movement if it is moving downward it will have a anti-clockwise movement like this since the pointer is connected to this drum the pointer also having a movement in this direction so here we have got a transfer of transmission of the movement as well uh, there is a magnification this is the working principle of sigma comparator
Now we consider the working of a mechanical uh, optical comparator. So here the mechanical uh, comparator is uh, combined with the optical comparator. So here we have got a light source like this. Okay, then it is a condenser, then a projection lens, and then uh, the right rays are collimated and it is now incident on the mirror. And the mirror, uh, it is deflected and it is available on a screen. Okay, then uh, the mirror position is actually governed by a lever mechanism like this. Okay, so this lever is connected to the plunger. So this portion is actually the mechanical part of this comparator, and the other parts are composed of the optical parts of the comparator. So this plunger has got a up and down movement when it is actually uh, slide when when the workpiece is slide below that one. So that magnif there is a lever mechanism. So some sort of magnification is there that is known as the mechanical magnification. So by this mechanical magnification, uh, a movement is there the, for this end an up and down movement. So by that up and down movement, the mirror also having an oscillatory movement. And from here, the mirror is actually again magnifying, that is optical magnification, and this light is incident on the screen. And the screen, we have got graduations, and based on the graduations, we can tell that whether the workpiece is within the limit or not. In an electric comparator, the operation depends on an AC Wheatstone bridge circuit incorporating a galvanometer. Wheatstone circuit bridge is like this. Uh, we can have uh, air resistance or or a car, uh, voltage source is there and that will be connected like this so this is the Wheatstone bridge circuit and we can have a voltmeter or a meter over here so it will show the uh, difference in current flowing through the circuit and uh, here the Wheatstone bridge is actually constituted by this uh, C and D coils and uh, there is an uh, armature in between that one that armature is finally connected to the plunger so whenever we have got a movement for this plunger this position of the armature also changes by changing the armature uh, position of the chain uh, armature the current uh, induced on c coil c and d may vary so that variation of current is actually uh, measured using a galvanometer so the galvanometer needle or dial is actually calibrated to show the displacement finally we are discussing about the working of a pneumatic comparator so the pneumatic comparator we are using compressed air so this compressed air storage tank is there and from there we are actually uh, taking that air through this pipeline and here we are providing an orifice orifice means a small opening so that means the pressure in this side of the orifice that is number one and the other side of the orifice that is a number two will be different so that difference in pressure is read by this manometer okay manometer is a pressure measuring device and that is actually showing the difference in pressure between that point one and two of the orifice then uh, at k uh, at the end of this uh, tube we have got a gauging head okay this is the gauging head and on the gauging head we have got fine nozzles and uh, this gauging head is actually inserted into the workpiece we are actually using this one to measure the holes okay so if it is inserted into that one uh, the air is actually escaped to the atmosphere through this nozzle and uh, it is not only escaping through the nozzle it is actually moving out through the air escaping space between the workpiece and the gauging head if this gap is more the pressure will be low because it will be easily expand if the gap is very less what will happen it will offer some resistance and the pressure will increase so that changing pressure is actually shown by this manometer and the manometer is calibrated show uh, actually this gap it is not showing the pressure now it is now calibrated to show the gap so we can tell that whether the gap is lying in uh, within the limit or not thank you for watching